Greetings from Code and Parallel. I am so glad that you could spare some time and join us today. My name is Simuzeche Kalua and I am a senior software engineer by trade. Robert Einstein once said, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, then you don't understand it yourself. In this series, we're going to build an API, a RESTful API using the .NET 6 framework. And we're going to follow this Einstein approach where we want everybody to fully understand and gain a sense of mastery and understanding at what an API really is, not just the classical textbook definition. If you're ready, and I am, and please press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon, because there will be more content in this series, I promise, great content. So let's buckle up and see an API from a young boy's perspective. So let's think of a scenario. Your best friend is a football coach. And for my American viewers and sub subscribers, uh, don't kill me. I'm in soccer there. So he's a football coach, a soccer coach. And he invites you to go to one of his matches and support him. And you being a good friend, well, you, you hop on with all the confidence. You're ready to support your friend. You get there, and then all of a sudden, your friend is confused. And you're like, come on, man, it's your big day. Why are you so confused? And he pulls you to a side and says, I forgot to go to the pharmacist on my way to the football ground. But now I have to coach because I'm out of time. The problem is he can coach and get medicine at the same time. So what do you do as a good friend? You volunteer to go to the pharmacist on his behalf and get the, his prescription. So you make a quick run to the pharmacy. You get the drugs and you rush back to the field. He has his meds. The team wins. I mean, we're all happy. And you might be asking, why are we talking about drugs and APIs? You see, I want us to critically analyze the situation. What has really happened in this scenario that does not normally happen? Okay? Your friend wanted the prescription. All he did was ask. But somehow he got his prescription. I mean, if you want something, you go and get it, right? And every single day or every single time he wants to go get his prescription, he goes himself to the pharmacy and he gets his prescription and he is on his way to run his normal errands. But in this scenario, that did not happen. That should be a question mark. How did that happen? That today, out of all days, he got his prescription without going to the pharmacy. Let's think about that for a few seconds and just let that sink in. The normalcy here has been deviated. Okay? All right. Uh, one thing that I've seen is, today, unlike all days, your friend has found someone to talk on his behalf. So, lucky enough, he has a friend who he just talked to and that friend did the things on his behalf, the things that he does every single day or every single time he goes get the prescription. So, in life, there are scenarios where two people can talk to each other directly. And they find a proxy or a delegate. In this case, he normally talks to the pharmacist for his prescription. But he cannot because of geographical challenges and timing challenges. So he has found a proxy, somebody to act on his behalf. Or he has dedicated a task 
to somebody to do it on his behalf. That's what has happened today. He has delegated. He has found somebody to do the things on his behalf. And lo and behold, you are the API in this scenario. And you wonder, ah, what does that mean? You have enabled two or more parties that can talk together directly to communicate. And my friends, that is a definition of an API. Okay, another example would be, I think I've seen in movies whereby the husband and the wife are not talking to each other. And the wife makes dinner and she wants the husband to come eat. What does she do? She goes to the son. She says, go tell your father food is ready. Right? The son goes to the father, daddy, food is ready. Again, the son there is the intermediary between the dad and the mom because normally they talk to each other direct. But because there are some scenarios abate and some share scenarios, they are forced to go through a proxy. I mean, this could be because of their ego, but I hope you get the whole point. The whole point is when you cannot talk to each other directly, you need somebody to do it on your behalf. In this case, you made it possible. You served your friend on his behalf. You, my friend, are an API. And when we hear of the word application programming interface, it's simply an intermediary between two or more systems. It just does, it just does a thing on that behalf. So instead of system A going to system B straight, they go through system C, which is an API in this scenario. So, in simple terms, an API is just a dedicate, the man in the middle. Again, we're stressing here on the understanding of an API, not a textbook definition. That will be full of jargons. All right. Now, let's just move a little bit further. You will notice that for you to get the prescription, you as the API, you and the pharmacist talked in a way that you guys understood each other. And in this case, we're going to assume you guys used English. The same goes for APIs. APIs also have a common language. All right. So we'll just briefly go through it briefly. All right. So an API is there to serve, right? So it receives a request. So when your friend asked you, go get me a prescription, he was serving you a request. He was giving you a command in a good way, say a, say a polite command, all right? So you received the request. But then the request could fall in many categories. It could be he wants you to get him something. He wants you to go and do something. So an API basically has four type of commands. You can either tell it, get me that, or post, which creates an item, Put, which updates an item, which is an edit. Then you've got delete, that just removes an item. So there has to be a, a language there. When it says, I want to get prescription. So the guy goes and gets prescription. If your friend wanted a new prescription, he would say, post me a prescription. Then he would give you the details of the prescription, which you would get the details and go to the pharmacist and he will serve and create a prescription. Which, of course, you can edit and also you can delete. Besides serving requests, an API also has to respond because you've sent it. And I mean, if you send it, it has to at least give some feedback, which is a response. And then the feedback usually is what the pharmacist, the pharmacist is giving you a prescription that was a feedback. So he wanted a feedback, he wanted a prescription, he came to you, you took that request and you send it to the pharmacist and he gives you the prescription. That's a response. So it could be a 200 signifying that, oh yeah, we have communicated. Salary, okay. Sometimes you can you, you get a response message in, in, in the ranges of 400. This means there is a client error. And this is between you and, and your friend because your friend is requested. So your friend could give you a language that the pharmacist doesn't understand. Or you, no, rather you don't understand. As a result, you say, no, I, I can't handle that. I don't understand Spanish, for instance. <laughs> So that error is coming from his side. Sometimes you and your friend can understand each other, but the moment you're going to the client, to the server rather, 
the server fails to process. For instance, it fails to give you a prescription. That's an error that says, mm, this is for the server error. So basically, there are those three layers. And um, again, I could spend the next three hours talking about a RESTful API, talk about its conformity, its architecture, its security, how you would log, how you would balance it, how you would let limit things. But I'm going to use the Pareto's principle here. I'm going to give you 20% of information that is going to yield at least 80%. Okay. So as we're going forward, we're going to build on top of that. So don't worry. You understand what a RESTful API is at the end of this series. But I just want you to be patient because I'm using it. An orthodoxical approach to teaching an API here. I think by now the question might be what are we building? What API are we building? If you guessed it, then you should subscribe. <laughs> so we're building a prescription management service. Okay, so it, it's so we are mimicking the whole scenario here. Now I'm just trying to automate it. All right. Um so I went online and just checked how a prescription looks like. And a prescription has the name of the patient, the date of birth, the strength, medication, it has the amount, how much, the route, the date, the signature, refills. It has a lot of stuff, but I don't I don't want us to be cluttered with all this stuff. So we're gonna pick a few characteristics that we're gonna go through. The idea is to show you how to build an API. Right, the rest could just so the API will be able to create that's creating in your prescription, read, getting a prescription from the system, it will be able to update that is editing a prescription that already exists in a system, and it will also delete that's removing an entry from the system. Now, uh, as a quick side. We have what we call in software development, what we call a system requirement specification. So basically, it tells you for the system to be complete, it has to meet these requirements. So look at this four as a bare minimum of those requirements. We just want to show you, or just trying to shed more light on the SRS document, because you pretty much begin from there and you build. So this one will be our one page, <laughs> if you might, SRS. So, in summary, what we've talked about and what I might add here on the RESTful is then there is a need for a verb, which now tells the API. If it's a GET, the API knows I have to go retrieve something. If it's a POST, it knows I have to go and create something. If it's a PATCH, I have to do a partial update of something. If it's a DELETE, I will have to delete something. Although we'll talk about how to handle deletes in an API in a production environment, you don't really want to delete something, you just want to hide it for the sake of audit, which we'll talk far much later in the in the course, but for now we shall delete. Alright? So and then there's what we call a URI. There's action, then there's a uni uniform resource identifier. All it does is it points us to the actual location of that resource. So it has to be a unique location. All right. So if we say, get me a specific, the second get, get me a specific prescription pay ID, it will go to that location and look if it exists. If it exists, it will get you that. So it has to be unique. And that's what. REST is all about resources, unique resources. And again, we shall talk about the, the rest as we go. But now we just want to get enough knowledge to help us build. Okay. So if you look at the API slash there, it's, it has no significance in terms of operation. It's just a standard. So for guys to understand that it's an API. So people start with API slash. Then you've got slash prescriptions. Well, that, that there, my friend, that's a noun, all right? And I have put it in, in plural because it's my preference. Others prefer singular, but I prefer plural because it kind of communicates more. And it makes more sense to have a noun there because in normal programming, you'd have 
it would be a verb for instance it would be like get prescriptions but in this case there's that verb already so it would be fitting for that URI to actually point that resource and not necessarily a function but rather that resource hence the notion of the of the noun there so at this juncture I think I'm gonna close this video uh, in the next video we're gonna start building and we're gonna build the theory and the practical little by little I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of detail at the beginning, but I want to make it as similar. So I'm following an approach that um, might be unorthodoxical, but if you stick with me and you're patient enough, by the end of the series, you're going to know everything in a fun way that you're learning every, every video, you're learning a new portion of theory. So stick with me. If you haven't, please subscribe, hit the bell icon, and like. But most importantly, comment, because comment is necessary for feedback. I get to see where I can improve. I get to see maybe I have rushed uh, a theory. I've rushed something. I get to go over it. You might be stuck. I might respond in the comments. Again, happy 2022. Uh, this video is being done like on 1st of January now. I hope it will be there will be lots in the series. We'll get the feedback and. Overall, we're just going to grow together. So thanks a lot and have a prosperous new year.